Well, from open borders to catch and release, look at these polls. They show that 63% of Iowa voters disapprove of the way Joe Biden is handling immigration. It's his worst issue by far. And that might be one of the reasons why Iowans elected Republicans to represent their state, because Republicans like Governor Kim Reynolds and Senator Joni Ernst, they promised to strengthen the border and protect American jobs. Yet this week, they did the opposite. When they learned that some 18,000 Afghans had applied for visas to the United States, they jumped at the opportunity to wave them in. I think the message that I want to relay to Iowans is that we want to be a partner. We want them here and we want them to know that and we'll work through those processes, whatever they may be. They are wonderful. They've supported our men and women in uniform. They love America. They are hard workers. We would love to welcome them into the state. So joining me now, the author of the new book, The Long Slide, which is available both in stores, but more importantly, directly at TuckerCarlson.com. And of course, the host of the show right after this one, Tucker Carlson. Tucker, glad to have you on the show. Um, you've been Thanks all over this story me. all week. I've been watching you talking about refugees being moved to the United States from Afghanistan. Here we are listening to Republicans who seem to have a charge from their voters to be strong on immigration, doing exactly the opposite of what their voters want. <laughs> so I'm watching that. I mean, first, I think we should note that Americans are welcoming to refugees and immigrants because they're decent, open-minded, big-hearted people, and that says something good about the United States. But the sort of blitheness, the lack of concern about details from our leaders really tells you how little they care about us. I watched Joni Ernst say that. We welcome them. Really? To your house? To your neighborhood? I don't think so to some sad little town with no power whatsoever. No one will ever go five years from now to see how it's going. No one's interested in the story of how it unfolds and the effects of, on your life, on your schools, on your infrastructure, on your taxes. Does it make you happier? Does it improve your life? You think Joni Ernst cares? Are you kidding? No, they go before the cameras, message, I care, I'm a good person, I'm compassionate. You, you know, who cares what you think? You're just a citizen. Um, so it really reveals, this is not an attack on the refugees for whom I think all people really feel. I certainly do. I'd want to get the hell out of Afghanistan. I get it. But what about Americans? How does it affect their lives? Have you ever been to a place where there's been mass refugee resettlement? I have. I live near one, actually. It's very tough to resettle large groups of people. Very tough. Tough to yeah. assimilate them. It's very tough for the people who already live there, but nobody cares. Joni Ernst clearly doesn't care. Why would you vote for Joni Ernst after that? I wonder. I don't know. Maybe they will again. I saw you talking about that earlier this week, being very honest about the successful nature of, or the lack of the successful nature of, of re, um, resituating refugees, not just in the United States, but across yeah. Europe as well. It's been a real hit and miss operation across the globe. But here's the thing. You, you talked about this, Tucker. You said, look, Americans have a big heart. We want to help out. And how do we yeah. walk this? How do we walk this line? There is this sense that we do owe these people who helped us out in a time of war. We do owe them something. So how do we balance what we might owe them to what we owe ourselves in terms of our country, our safety, and all the values that voters care about? Well, I mean, first identify the, the people to whom we really do owe something and then make the case. I mean, not all Pashtuns are the same. Not all Tajiks are the same. Just because you're from Afghanistan doesn't mean you help the United States or you're a hero. Maybe, maybe Joni Ernst could head over to Kabul and personally screen these people. Maybe Peter Meyer of Michigan could do the same. This sort of shut up, they're heroes. What are you, a racist? <laughs> By the way, they're like white guys in beards. Race has nothing to do with this. Let's take that off the table. It's about a country that's deeply divided, ours, that's getting poorer, ours, and the effect on our country of mass immigration, whether it's refugees or people from Guatemala or Haiti or any part of the world that might want to come here. How does it affect us? That's not only a fair question, it's the main question, and it's never asked by anyone in charge. That tells you everything about how they feel. I think here's a great example of that, by the way. Exactly what order of priority do Americans maintain in most of these politicians' yeah. minds? Right now, there are Americans behind enemy lines, in essence, in Afghanistan. And uh, Wendy Sherman, she stood up, stood up to the podium today. This is the first thing she said before she talked about, this was yesterday, before she talked about Americans or anybody else, this is the first thing she had to say. Watch. Before I take your questions, I want to speak to a situation that's very personal to me. Societies could not flourish and prosper without the full participation of women and girls back then, and they cannot and flourish, they cannot flourish and prosper without women and girls now. 
Now, that's, I'm sure, something we can both agree on, that women and the prospering of <laughs> yeah. women, across, that everybody is for that. But before we get Americans out from behind enemy lines, that needed to be addressed. What I love about that is such a perfect dissolution. And Wendy Sherman's a buffoon, obviously. She's implicated in this disaster. People like Wendy Sherman got us there, kept us there for 20 years. She should apologize, but she doesn't. The first thing she does is she said, I want to take a second to talk about myself <laughs> and then to give you a self-righteous moral lecture about how I'm better than you. I mean, that's like the perfect distillation of everything. Everything, the preface is always, but enough about you. Let me talk about me for a second and my concerns and my history, my lived experience, and what a good person I am. So with that aside, now, to your questions, oh, shut up, racist. Another one, shut up, racist. I mean, how long were people going to put up with this? How about, enough about you, Wendy Sherman. How about us, like 340 million people who live in a country that's getting worse? How are you going to improve our lives? Any answer? Oh, I doubt it. Uh, this next uh, question for you. Uh, I think it's actually a good opportunity to talk about your book, by the way. You have a book out. We just mentioned it, The Long Slide, 20 Years in Journalism. And I think the last time I talked to you on air, I started to go down this path, and I asked you when it is you think the media lost their way. Was it always so slanted? But here, I, I want to ask you instead about the American people. I've been shocked, and I've been talking about it this week, Tucker. You know, media politicians, elites, corporations, they're corrupt, they're, they're perhaps irredeemably corrupt, and we can see that now. And yeah. it's manifesting in these COVID policies. It's not science, it's scientism. But I'm a little taken aback, yeah. Tucker, by my fellow Americans, Americans who not just are compliant, but so many that become the enforcers of this anti-science yeah. sort of authoritarian nature over each other. And I just wonder, like, what yeah. is it about our fellow Americans that have embraced this idea of let me force my other ideas on you? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the entire country is being manipulated by highly clever, ruthless people who are harnessing the worst qualities in human nature. You know, lynchings have happened throughout history, not just simply simply in this country, but in all countries, because there's something in people that wants to turn on the unpopular kid and beat him to death. That's like who we are. That's the ugliest part of who we are. And if you have ruthless leaders who are willing to exploit that for their own gain, and we do, then they wind up turning the population against itself and vaccinated, unvaccinated, white, black, these divisions, which we didn't recognize a year ago, are now defining our lives and we're being used. I mean, that's the truth. If you want to subdue people, divide them. And that's exactly what they're doing. And I, you know, p people shouldn't participate in it. But again, they're harnessing human nature against us. I think that's exactly right. And then the next obvious question is used by whom for what purpose? Yeah. Well, for control, of course. I mean, smoke more weed. You know, here's Netflix just sewn out. We got this. Right. Really? Oh, you got it, huh? Is right. that going to help me? Probably not. So not only do you have the long slide out, your new book, but there is another passion that we actually have in common, and that is the idea of UFOs. I'm pretty fascinated by this, and yeah. you have a new Fox Nation special yeah. about UFOs. What's that about? Well, I mean, there's just a huge amount of evidence that the U.S. government for 70 years has been tracking these objects that are real. They're not a foreign government. They're not human beings inside. We know because the G-forces they exhibit are beyond what people could, could withstand. And they've lied about it for all these years. The question is why? What are these things? Kind of a big story if you think about it. It's not a figment of our imagination. They're absolutely real. They defy science as we understand it. So, like, what the hell? Why is that not the biggest story? I mean, I know COVID is the biggest story, like the flu, but UFOs are real. I mean, that, how's that for a headline? I, mean, I was in the news business for a long time. I guess I still am. That's a headline. UFOs are real? What? And we sort of like blow past, oh, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> no, not yeah. fine. What is this? In a year of COVID and, and, and race and everything else, you're right. The, the government acknowledged that UFOs exist, and that just kind of flew under the radar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, really quickly, yeah, what can we Yeah, flew under the radar <laughs> like a million miles an hour. Right. Really quickly, what can we expect from the long slide as well? Uh, well, the book is out. It's just, you know, 30 years of journalism. It really hits. I think some of it's pretty good. I liked listening to people back when I was a print guy. You have to listen. And you're not always on transmit like I am now. And uh, I think it held up pretty well. But you get a sense of how much the country has changed. Yeah. I like you talked it's about a lot of the people you've known along the way and how they've changed as well. People that used to be friends. Yeah. I've experienced that same kind of thing. Yeah. When you live in one side of the media. I you I, yeah, yeah, I have. I have. I bet you I'm have. open to still being friends. I'm open to it. Me too. All right. That's right. Politics is not the most important thing to me. That's for sure. That's exactly right. Will Payne, thank you. 20 minutes. We'll see you on Tucker Carlson tonight. Thanks, Tucker. Thank you. Right. See you, man. See you.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.